Besides black art, there's only automation and mechanization. Federico Garcia Lorca, 1936. Mondo, 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 have played vital roles in the articulation of Black B, and today, continue to offer up the beat of a cosmic drum, tuned to empower the Black body. Mondo Black went on the road to visit with some of today's vibrant artists, mixing movement, music, and media, and reinventing Black art identity along the way. This is Mondo Black. We like the way we move. First, we traveled to Arizona to chat with award-winning composer, performer, and choreographer Risha Home at work on her new multimedia performance series, Echo System, melding music, dance, and video. So, my name is Risha Coleman, professor of movement, computation, and digital media, and I'm an artist. This is called. The overall piece is called Echo System, and I've set it up as like a, a five-part series. Actually, it was a visit to Australia that, that started the idea, um, because I had been working in New York for a long time, and I'd been working in the, in the realm of dance and performance for a long time. And for me, I had started to kind of either, you could either say get burnt out or just see repeated over and over again what, you know, a certain kind of content, let's say, very identity-based and saying everything that I feel about this is the content that I want to bring to this or here I'm oppressed in this kind of way and so there's the content that I want to bring. And so, you know, I was like, that's great, that's cool, but now how does this, uh, how, how do artists, how do con con contemporary artists kind of... Um, move their dialogue or their dialectic into a broader field. I wasn't that geeky, but I was interested in science, but in science in a very, like, very, in a kind of soft science way, insofar as I was looking at the performance of nature, especially in Australia. So, and I was looking at that and thinking, what are these processes that you know, keep these ecologies alive and going, and how about, how would it be to sort of take this as a content base, take this as a narrative, as opposed to sort of a, a quote-unquote man-made story, even though, of course, it would be human, human-derived and human-interpreted, how, what would it be like to, to look at these complex systems? I just wanted to do it in a, in, in a way that reflected, let's say, my cultural uh, point of view which did then, again, have to do with black people and putting black people in space. And not necessarily in space, but in a parallel universe. That's how it began, and that combined with sort of the readings of Octavia Butler and, and being influenced very much by science fiction writers of, of any race, but especially, especially Octavia Butler and just that kind of envisioning uh, the future, envisioning universes where you know, yeah, it was somehow strong that it wasn't a, f a fully, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a white dominated world anymore. In this other place, people don't even think about it like that. Next, we landed in Brooklyn to chat with poet, performer, composer, and filmmaker M. Takala Keaton on the conundrum of being called a black artist and his recent sound cinema triptych. Black art, it's like, I understand black art and then I don't understand black art. I'm a black man, love being a black man, and I understand that their funk could be considered a black art form. Because who else would produce the mothership, right? But art is art. Sometimes folk figure that art, or art done by particular people, is art for a mass audience, and then black art is for black folk. And if I'm a black artist, I'm just clear that my art is for everybody. 
I became aware that I wanted to be an artist um, as a kid. But it really struck me when I went to South Africa. It seemed like everybody could dance. Everybody could sing. And all, most of the dances or the songs were dances and songs of freedom. And it kind of became clear to me that I thought the whole movement in South Africa was more about or was just about weapons and theory, but it became clear to me that it was also about culture. And anybody that has a culture of freedom at some point will actually attain freedom. That's when um, I made the pledge to become an artist. I came up on house music, dance music. And uh, then when I lived in London for a while, you know, they were doing broken beat, uh, drum and bass. Uh, I was around a lot of those cats. So a lot of my stuff is either, you know, broken beatish, housey, uh, I call it soul electronica. I kind of close my eyes and I kind of feel like it comes from space. It's actually the album I'm working on, it's called Love is a Spaceship. I just think that to actually acquire that feeling of being in love and actually being courageous enough to love somebody else, you, may, you have to leave yourself and maybe even leave this place that we're in and go someplace higher and then you return 